At this fairly nondescript commercial building in Vista, it's just another day at the office for Pierre-Luc Gagnon. Aboard is his briefcase, his boardroom, this enormous wood ramp. So this is your view of the world. Yeah, we're at the DC ramp. Uh, it's my favorite ramp around here. It's got a very unique design. It's got offset walls, like you can transfer from this ramp to that ramp. And we always set up uh, ledges and boxes like over there where you can just grind, you know, from a section to the other of the ramp. You can't really be afraid of heights to be in the business you're in. I mean, actually, <laughs> this ramp's pretty small compared to the mega ramp we skate in. This ramp over here is 14 foot tall. It's probably uh, 16 over there. <laughs> and uh, the mega ramp is uh, 27 foot tall. The fact that it's a little bit scary is the fun part about it because it's, it's always a challenge and there's always like consequences to what you're trying. Bumps, bruises, the occasional broken bone and all, Pierre is one of the lucky ones, doing what he loves while making a living and making a name for himself as a top professional vert skateboarder in the world. And it all started back as a kid in an unlikely place, Montreal, Canada. He was born in 1980 to two school teachers and grew up speaking French. Uh, in <laughs> French, it's Pierre Le Gagnon. Okay. Uh, if you're going to pronounce it in French, but people out here just say Pierre Le Gagnon. At 14, he started learning English. From uh, listening to TV, traveling, listening to rap music. <laughs> <laughs> traveling because he got good at something. <laughs> that began as a hobby. Pretty sure I saw it on TV when I was a kid, you know, around like maybe 85, 86. And I remember there was a bunch of kids just rolling around my neighborhood, so I'd borrow their boards and start rolling around. Right when vert, or ramp, skateboarding was becoming popular. You know, when I first started skating in, in the 80s, um, there was a lot of negative comments about skateboarding, especially out there, because people thought we were just a bunch of bums and, you know, just jump punks, just skating down the street. But now that you know it's actually on TV, there's X Games and all that, it's a lot more accepted and a lot more respected. My parents just wanted me to do good in school, basically. So they were like, whatever you do outside of school, if it keeps you focused and helps you to stay motivated and you know out of trouble, basically, uh, you know, will support you doing it. And so, did it? Yeah. Basically, I started skating in Montreal. Uh, you know, we had nowhere to skate during the winter because we get snow five months out of the year. So we're always struggling, like try to get a bunch of guys, like 50 guys, rent a warehouse and then get it going for the winter. And then summer would come and then we'd lose the warehouse, right? Discovering it's not just a sport, but an art form. It's all about being original and creative. So did that just suit your personality then? I guess, you know, I, I never really liked to, uh, you know, do what everyone was doing. You know, I didn't like to conform and I, I never was into team sports really. Mm -hmm. So uh, skateboarding was perfect for me. With essentially no coaches, he started competing at 10 years old and at 16 entered a Vans-sponsored world tour contest. And by winning this, I got a contract with Vans, which allowed me to travel and, you know, go and compete and come to California for the first time. So that's pretty much what got everything started. Uh, wow. This is basically the uh, gym slash award room slash boardroom. First X Games medal was in 2000. Actually got two silver medals. That was my first uh, X Games gold medal in 2002 in Philly. Mm -hmm. And then um, in 2005, I got a silver, a gold, and a bronze. And now this is just from 2007 in San Diego, the Action Sports yeah, yeah. Tour. You know, your house really reflects your personality, I think. You got the red paint. I'm Canadian, you know, and I, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I got to paint this red, you know. So it suits me. You have a pretty cool website. My sponsors pay me for a reason, so I got to try to make him happy and all that. Allowing him at 27 to own his own home in Carlsbad and go to work on a ramp. Experts in the field say he does stuff on a board that makes other riders pale in comparison. 
This year I was doing like a few tricks in my contest run that no one else can do. Like I was doing this one trick, it's called a uh, switch hill flip front side air 360. Basically it's a switch dance 360, but I'm flipping my board at the same time. How many times do you have to try something before uh, you know, it works uh, or it doesn't work? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, out, it's it. never the same, you know, it's all over the place. Skating, especially after you learn a trick, it's just the most incredible feeling. Like it's basically you've been trying for so long and so hard and you've been taking all those slams, then finally you make it. That, that's gotta be one of the best feelings. Same thing when you're trying this run and then you finally make it and you pull it when, when it counts, then uh, yeah, that's a pretty amazing feeling. It's really hard to describe. You kind of have to do it to, to know how it feels. I don't think there's any limits because we, you know, we all thought that, you know, a 10 foot air or a 12 foot air was the highest you could go, you know, 10 years ago. And now we're doing like, you know, 25, nearly 30 foot airs on the mega ramp. If you build a bigger structure, you can actually go higher. So with Pierre, perhaps only the sky is the limit.